This MacBook right here, the 2015 13-inch MacBook Air, might be one of the most iconic MacBook designs, in my opinion, from a few years ago. And I want to do a comparison of this laptop to some of the newer MacBooks or even the Retina MacBooks from around this time period and just kind of get an idea as to how well it holds up in 2024 or compares to that. Now, of course, starting off with the design of this thing, one thing that's really iconic or stands out about the MacBook Air is this aluminum bezel that goes around the display and it just kind of is a little design thing Apple made to make this stand out from the MacBook Pros. And the display on this too is only a 1440 by 900 display, which isn't great. It's definitely not as good as the Retina display that again, the 2015 MacBook Pros. However, it's definitely good enough, I think, for a casual user maybe. And you have to keep in mind too, this laptop is around $150. And if you're to go buy a new laptop for around $150, you're probably not gonna get you know, a really, really high resolution display. Another kind of iconic design feature about this laptop too is the Light Up Apple logo here. Now, what's really interesting about this is this Light Up Apple logo actually doesn't use a separate LED. It uses the backlight of the display. So fun little trick you can do with this, take your phone's flashlight or take another light, put it and shine it on the back here, and you can kind of see the Apple logo show up on the other side of the screen, which I find really funny. And then opening up the laptop too and talking about the keyboard and trackpad, the keyboard in this is really comfortable to type on and is really responsive. I definitely prefer over the scissor switch keyboards that you have on the 2016 to 2019 uh, MacBooks. And the trackpad in this too, it doesn't use the haptic trackpad that you get on the MacBook Pros, but this is an actual like physical clicking diving board trackpad that you see on most laptops. Some people like it, some people don't. Personally, I don't really care. So one thing that's really nice about this laptop too is how it charges. So it uses this thing called MagSafe, which is basically a magnetic charger that attaches to the side of the laptop. And that's really nice because it makes connecting it a lot easier. But also too, if you trip on the cable, it doesn't drag the laptop down with it, which can prevent unnecessary uh, damage. And it is kind of sad that Apple uh, removed that on the next MacBook Air design, but they did finally bring it back with the M2 MacBook Airs, so that's really appreciated. And for ports, you have two USB ports, a headphone jack, an SD card slot, and a Thunderbolt 2 port. And then the MacBook I have here has a 2.2 gigahertz dual core i7 with eight gigabytes of RAM, which is an upgrade from the i5 and four gigabytes that I get on the base model. However, base model or not, uh, the person who's gonna be using this laptop is gonna pretty much be using it for the same thing, and that's mainly just web browsing. And for web browsing on this, things load decently quickly. Uh, things typically loaded within a second. And I wouldn't say the load speeds on this are as great as you know a newer MacBook for web browsing, but it's definitely something that's completely usable, and I don't think it's really something that people are gonna be like, oh, this thing takes too long to load. However, where load speeds kind of do get slow though is with launching applications, weirdly enough. Now, it's interesting because this laptop has a SSD hard drive, so you'd think everything would just load you know, almost instantly. But for some really weird reason, when you load applications on this, it sometimes takes a few seconds to load. And I don't know what that is or what's causing that. And if somebody knows, feel free to comment down below. But it'll take like three seconds to load the news app and then when I actually use the application itself, there's no lag whatsoever, everything loads instantly. So that I kind of find a little bit weird. Also too, gaming on this isn't super great. I tried playing Minecraft and I'd only get about 15 to 20 frames per second, which to me, I don't consider that playable at all. For other applications too, like Microsoft Excel and Microsoft Word, that stuff loaded just fine. I was able to use that just fine, but I didn't do anything crazy with it. Now, one thing I know people are kind of curious about too is battery life. So in the course of the few hours I've been using this on and off, I lost about 20% battery life, which that ain't bad, but something where if I was to unplug this in the morning, take it to the office and hope it lasts me throughout the whole day, I don't think I'd really trust it. It would be something that I'd definitely bring a charger with. And then of course, buying a laptop this old, you have to be mindful of software support. 
So this laptop can only go up to Mac OS Monterey, which might be concerning for people who use the professional apps out there like the Microsoft Cloud apps or the Adobe Cloud apps, because those applications typically only support the three most recent versions of Mac OS, and Mac OS Monterey is kind of at that cutoff point. It's also a similar story too with the Mac App Store apps. Most Mac App Store apps are still supported. However, applications like Final Cut Pro and iMovie just got drop support on this computer. So if you are somebody who uses Mac App Store applications or any other professional applications out there, definitely check the developer's website and make sure this meets the minimum requirements for that. But of course, with this laptop too, you're still gonna get security updates, you're still gonna get web browser updates and stuff like that. So if you are somebody who just wants to buy this for you know, a casual home computer where you're just gonna use this for web browsing and downloading things off the web, this is definitely gonna be a really good laptop for that over the next few years. But anyways, I know some people are wondering, should you buy one of these? And my honest answer is, if it was me personally, I'd try to find a 2015 Retina MacBook Pro just because of the nicer display and trackpad. But if you are somebody who just needs a cheap MacBook that you know you're gonna use for casual use at home for web browsing and you want to last you a while, this laptop isn't a bad option, especially considering you can find these for around $150 now. But anyways, I'll leave a review to that 2015 Retina MacBook Pro up on screen. Thank you all for watching and goodbye.